flashback data archive. We are considering adding flashback data archive to every table in our database in lieu of audit triggers. Do you see any issues with this? Here is my answer. Yes and no. Mainly toward no. I don't think there's be a lot of issues, but there's something we need to talk about because I was experimenting with this for this customer to see what, what's the scope of impact. Is, is it a valid solution? Now, a quick recap as to where Flashback Data Archive sits and why I think it's actually a cool solution when it comes to audit. This is how we do a Flashback Data Archive. You create a table space into which your Flashback Data Archive stuff will be stored. It can be an existing one or it can be a new one. And then you create this new object called a Flashback Archive and you nominate how long stuff will be retained for in this archive. Any table you put into this Flashback Archive will have any changes to that table recorded for at least one year. So I do alter table M, flashback archive, long term, and then I rush off and do a lot of DML onto my table. It's a popular table. It doesn't really matter. I just smash away at it. If I do select star from M, well, obviously the explain plan just does table access full. Job done. What if I do flashback query? I say, show me the employee table as it was an hour ago. I don't need anything special to do that. I don't need to use flashback data archive because looking back now, I can probably just get that out of the undo segments, normally the undo retention. So I can just rewind the changes that have come out of that table from the undo segments. But what about if I come back three days later and say, show me the table as it was a few days ago. That's what Flashback Data Archive enables. You can see the execution plan looks very different. To show me the table as it was three days ago, I'm looking at these new internal tables that came as a result of putting that table into the Flashback Data Archive because these tables are capturing deltas to the table. If I look at the DDL very briefly on these tables that are created for me, there's one called TCRV, let's call transaction record. I'm, I'm just guessing here, transaction record and versions, transaction row, transaction control row version maybe. But you can see it's got a start SCN, an end SCN, a transaction ID, an operation, insert, update, delete. It's effectively a list of every transaction that's occurred to the employee table. FBA hist, a history of changes, the first few columns look like a foreign key back to that opening table, the TCRV table, and this looks like all the actual values of the columns that occurred for every single transaction. So it looks a bit like an audit history on a transaction by transaction basis. What that lets you do is query to any time in the past. Now, when we first released Flashback Data Archive, it was called Total Recall. People said, what's the use? I don't care what the employee table looks like in June what's you know that's a non-requirement for me that's where we started thinking about flipping this requirement if you can see the employee table that was in june or march or wednesday or an hour ago or any time that you nominate what you're really getting is every historical version of every row that's the only way you can do it if you can nominate any point in time in that one year and that of course is what we used to do with audit history most of us, I'm sure, have worked on projects where for every table called My Table, there's a table called My Table Audit with a couple of extra columns, and we write a big lengthy trigger for every single table which says whenever you insert or update or delete My Table, we log a row into your audit table equivalent. It works, but generally it's a lot of code because you have all these triggers. It's even more code if you need to do it efficiently because that's a row by row operation. You really should be using bulk binding, which means compound triggers and PL SQL tables, etc. It's just a lot of work, a lot of management. You need to make sure you change it when you add columns, etc. It's just a lot of effort. Flashback Data Archive can conceivably offer that same audit trail with no triggers because we have this thing called the versions between syntax in Flashback Query. So I could actually say, show me every version of every row between two timestamps, and that is the equivalent of an audit history. I'm using Flashback Data Archive, not as a show me a point in time in the past operation, but a show me every point in time in the past to get my audit history. Of course, I'd be willing to bet very few people do this, even though whenever I give my Flashback talk, I say this is a good use case for Flashback Data Archive. And the reason people didn't used to do it is because we used to charge you for Flashback Data Archive. It used to be separately licensed. But from 12 to onwards, which hopefully most of us are on, it's 100% free. So you can use Flashback Data Archive without compression for no cost. So suddenly this order option becomes something very, very useful. 
So that ticks off, I might have ticked the wrong box there. I'm saying yes, Flashback Data Archive is an excellent candidate for audit history. Let's talk about the no part now as to why it might not be ideal due to one particular reason that we're looking to fix. You need to be careful with volume. And I don't necessarily mean the number of tables you have Flashback Data Archive, oh, that is a factor, but the volume of transactions that you are actually running through the table that has Flashback Data Archive on. And it's not an issue of keeping up. It's not a question of being difficult for the database to capture the changes and store them. That is sweet. That's incredibly fast. It's something slightly different. Let's run a demo. So there's two things I want to show you with Flashback Data Archive that you need to be careful of. Now, what I'm doing is I'm shutting down my plug when starting it up. So it's a brand new pluggable database or brand new fresh instance of this pluggable database. I'm going to flash out the shared pool. So there's nothing in there. That's just for the de demo later to come. And as we said, we're going to build a flashback archive, just one day retention. I'm just reusing the table space called users. I could have created a new one, but a flashback archive with a retention of one day. I'm going to create a table called FDA demo. It's a copy of DBA objects. And I'm going to put it into the flashback data archive. So we're now good to go. One of the interesting things with Flashback Data Archive is at Oracle, we generally don't want to do work unless we have to. That's a waste of resources. So me running that alter table command has not gone and created those underlying Flashback Archive tables because I don't need to create them until you start doing DML. Let's start doing some DML. And here's the first thing you need to be careful of. If the first DML you do is after a database start, which is unlikely, but it's possible, we have this drama. It's just sitting there. It's actually stuck on something. What's happening is it's waiting for SMON to come along and do some work to create those tables in the background. So you get these audience idiosyncrasies if it's the first DML on a brand new FDA after a database startup. So I have a routine here, which will actually wake up SMON for me. I find out that it's process 19. I run an or a debug command and you can see my DML has sprung back to life. So that's the first one. It's very unlikely you'll be hit by that, but it's just something you need to be aware of. And just, you know, it can cause some angst. But this is the more serious one. Here's some DML. Now that DML is running, I'll run some different DML. Insert, so I deleted 10 rows. I insert 10 rows, update 10 rows, a few more things. I'm just going to run a whole lot of DMLs. That's the same anonymous blocks just floated through it a number of times, just to massage this table. The reason I flushed the shared pool before was to show that what comes out of the database when I run these DMLs you'll see this. One of the things that the flashback archive has to do is because I've said retain information for a day is as the flashback archive information is populated, I need to move the data along as well. So even though obviously a day hasn't passed here, I don't know that yet. So I'm slowly just deleting transactions as they age longer than a day because that was my retention period. If it was a year, it would, I'll be aging things out that are older than a year. So I'm had this sliding window of what's retained in my flashback data archive. The problem we discovered when it comes under volume is notice here that this is just a literal statement. And that is an SCN number that will move over time, obviously. And what can happen is if you have hundreds of tables in Flashback Data Archive and they're all having lots and lots of volume, then what happens is you start seeing your shared pool getting very strongly polluted with these delete statements because they're all different. The SCN is constantly changing and therefore you have the classic example of not using bind variables. It's just an unfortunate bug because most people, when we first built Flashback Data Archive, were picking just a couple of select tables and generally they were, you know, retention periods were very, very long and the, you know, the volume was generally fairly small. And so, yes, it wasn't using bind variables, but the number of delete statements in your shared pool was manageable. Under high volume, especially when you have lots of tables in Flashback Data Archives, you can see in this particular customer, they had tens of thousands of these statements in their shared pool. And so they created some parsing issues. One thing I will say is when this customer encountered this problem, patches are on their way. I had a meeting recently actually with the development team looking after Flashback Data Archive, and that's a patch that's coming very shortly in MRS. It's actually, it's, we've actually run this on our beta systems internally and that problem is solved. The patches are coming, but once that's done, you'll find Flashback Data Archive becomes then a really, really cool candidate for audit history, thus absolving you of the need of having a whole stack of triggers and a lot of complexity that you'd just rather not have.